Brand new true facts. You can sludge all you want. Let's take a look. The militarized whoopee cushion. This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Well, that's brilliant. The story of Oliver the short-beaked echidna begins here. A single fertilized egg. Well, technically, I suppose it started here. Oliver's parents, Jacko and Charlotte, were in a back alley and had just shared a half a can of Foster's. Which is quite a bit for an echidna, by the way. And let's just say that passion got the better of them. Got the whole thing on a security camera. <laughs> but you notice now that we're it's watching. a delicate process, which takes some time. They are echidnas, after all. Look a bit like a feather duster from a fetish club. So let's just say that the echidna karma suit... Thank you, Telvin. 52 months. Thank you. It doesn't exactly have that many pages in it. More like a pamphlet. <laughs> but listen, besides navigating the pointy bits, you've got the whole four-headed penis thing going. And to avoid confusion, I don't mean a penis with a forehead. That's just normal. I mean that in its flaccid state, the male echidna's penis looks ah! a bit like how they might grow craisins. It looks like what happens when you ask a witch to bring a fart to life. For some time, this four-headedness was a bit of a mystery, seeing as the female's bits would only require two. And that's when one scientist decided to do the obvious and just ask. Turns out echidnas can't talk. It's educational penis. So, real shit scientist, by the way. Anyway, another science hippie decided Ew! to take a closer look. It turns out when the echidna penis is erect, it looks like a punk singing, singing opera. But you can see here that Ew! only two of the four tips become erect, and the whole thing rotates a bit, so functionally it becomes a two-headed penis. Just right for the female counterparts. And these alternate. One pair becomes erect and ejaculates, and then the other. It's sort of like... It'll come to me. Kill me. Now this double barrel shot dong seems to be controlled by blood flow from a single vein that splits into two right before the tips. Anyway, back to the alley where the pair are now smoking a cigarette and Jacko's sperm is rushing on its way to Charlotte's mm. uteruses. Echidna sperm, it turns out, are... Somebody snitches in chat. I didn't think that about you guys. Sort of into carpooling. Disappointed. They twist together in these bundles oh, that end up cool. moving faster than an individual sperm would. It's smart. It's what happens when you put your heads together. Get it? No. When they go, it looks a bit like a shuttlecock. And quite frankly, this is what that word awesome. should mean. I'm on fire. So one of these sperms here eventually makes it to an egg and gets Charlotte all pretty. She literally is getting drilled. And that brings us back to Oliver here. Hi, Oliver. He doesn't look like much at this point, but probably a welcome respite from what you've been looking at for the past few minutes. Over the next 20 or so days, this little embryo has to build itself a body. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with this whole development process, but we'll have a little refresher. First, it sort of flattens out and then mm. goes all pinchy-pinchy before transforming into a slightly toothed vagina. Then, onto a Salvador Dali impression of SpongeBob before hitting the crucial stage of two squirrels humping. <laughs> From here, as you know, it picks up a bit. Next, we have a goblin fondly admiring his new pet baby dragon into oh how sad the dragon flew away, plus major side boob. It's starting to look like uh, something out of Alien. Oliver seems to take a keen interest into a certain part of his body, if you know what I mean. No, you don't, because look, it was just a hand grenade wrapped in tissue paper, you pervert. And now he's on to you with your dirty mind. Look at that side eye. Then to a, well, it's still a side eye, but he's getting sleepy. And then he falls asleep and dreams that his belly button has become a fist. Now, at this point, if you get a close up on the face, sure, you might think that's a butthole of a sleeping ghost bear. Or maybe a gummy bear that's thinking, You brought me out of the bag just to give me a kiss, didn't you? The horror. But pay attention now. When it turns into a zombie testicle with a five head, you can see something interesting start to emerge. Right there, a little tooth. And if you look at the stout Eek. Charizard, you can see it better. This little temporary tooth is very important because it will help the little baby break out of this. Look at that. Ah. Charlotte laid an egg, and she put it in her oh, pouch. It's an egg in her a pouch. pouch, by the way, is also temporary, forming I just... I thought that was a uh, virgin. ...before breeding season. Like if your belly button only opened up when it wanted a grape. Now you want to put a grape in your belly button, don't you? Go ahead. Listen, if you're watching this show, you're obviously into learning, but you also want to have a bit of fun while you're doing it. And that pretty much sums up Brilliant's approach. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. And those are some of the most important skills to have right now if you're looking for a job or even if you're trying to follow what's happening in the news these days. And the lessons don't just jabber at you. You get to play with concepts and solve problems. An approach, by the way, that's been shown to be six times more effective than watching video lectures. Present company excluded. It's an election year and there's a lot of talk about data being thrown around. We'll help you sort through it. Brilliant recently launched oodles of lessons that use real world data to help you see trends and spot ways that data can be manipulated. And you don't have to be I'm not skipping the ad. I'm just watching it fast. 
Listen to it, you're not in your pace. But you just That's ethical. Cool. Brush up on your Bayes theorem. Get nasty with multiple linear regression. That's hot. Because it feels good to learn. You pat yourself on the butt back. Wherever you are at. To try anything Brilliant has to offer for free. For a full 30 Guys, days. Guys, brilliant.org slash zfrank. Or just scan that QR code. Pascan Carry. Thanks for the one year. Brilliant.org slash zfrank. Or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Give it a look today. Brilliant has been a long time sponsor of this show and I'm a fan. We were me. Oh, right. This egg is not hard like the egg of a bureau. Egg. Instead, it's made of a tapestry of keratin-like fibers. And it's soft and leathery, which is more like the eggs Holy of some shit, reptiles. And when it's time to bust out, it's handy to have that little tooth. Emerald, thanks for the and sub and enjoy your Apple TV+. Plus. First time in the open air. Little I don't know if it works if you're resubbing, though. Someone says it only works on new subs or gifted subs. Baby Oliver. Now, not all echidnas are born into the smooth, outstretched fingers yeah. of a man's hand. We should so all you be just so got lucky. scammed. No, most of them hatch into what looks like the unkempt navel of a construction worker Ew. during a midsummer's heat wave. It is in this environment, somewhat reminiscent of pornography in the 1960s, that Oliver must search for his first meal. Now, you should know that what Oliver is looking for, well, more like smelling for, is called a milk patch. It's sort of what you might get if you tried to buy a discount nipple in a gas station parking lot. Ew! Just sort of leaks. <laughs> And you can't return it. Oh, sorry, didn't know you wanted a fancy nipple with a tip on it. It costs extra. So whatever childhood you had, I bet you weren't desperately holding on to pubic hair the diameter of your thumb, lapping at whatever oozed out some proto-nipple. God forbid you let go. Let's just say that pouch doesn't exactly have a ziplock on it. You know what you need right there is a good sphincter. Keep the baby in. You can find those in the plumbing aisle of Home Depot. Soon, Oliver's head is reduced to a point with a single eye. Oh, what is he throwing up? Oh, that's the back end. All right. And so, I see, this part's the front. I mean, it's not that different. Anyway, not knowing much else, Oliver stays in that pouch for quite some time. Maybe too long. I mean, it's just my opinion, but by the end, he sticks out like when you're trying to stuff Ew, man! Why does this look so gross? Jeans. I mean, that's a life lesson right there. Some holes are nice for a while, but then you gotta move on. Now, you've probably heard them called all sorts of things. Oh, so. A hamster dressed up as an elephant, a tardigrade with Botox lips, or even sentient scrotum, which is downright offensive. But these beanie babies made from leftover elbow skin are called puggles. Get it right. And don't try this. Any category, no kids. These are professional science hippies trained in rearing puggles. Because once in a while, they do fall out that air quotes pouch. At this stage, oh, these no. puggles aren't exactly heavy on the defense, but... Sorry, heavy on the defense. But you can start to see a five o'clock shadow form on their bodies. At this stage, these Eek. puggles are basically dumplings of the meadow and spend most of their time hiding out in burrows with their mummy. Before they venture out into the world, they need to grow a spine. Well, a whole bunch of them really <laughs> get it. And Lol. that's what they do. The spines first come in as little bitty things. But before long, Definitely, they look Jerry. like a field of number two pencils right before the harvest. Only Stop after, talking to Poke. He's only my friend. After the spines have started to come in, do echidnas develop little hairs eee, in between so them? Hairs with an inferiority complex. No, your job is just as important. Oh boy. By adolescence, echidnas look a bit like a militarized whoopee cushion. Are those just nuts? Around, the spines can lay flat-ish, but if they get their curve on, it gets all pointy-pointy. Mm. Much of the body of the echidna has this sheath of muscle just under the skin called the paniculus carnosus. Flexing this muscle can move the spines and even point them in a particular Trippy. direction. And they might do this to get some ventilation or to get some grippage down in a tunnel, or of course for defense. Echidnas, if you haven't noticed, don't exactly excel in the running department. So under threat, what they'll often do is wedge themselves into a tight space huh. or dig down a little and bowl up, like Oliver here. I didn't forget. Now, you might be a bit sour on that bird there picking on poor Oliver, but this is one of those don't judge a book by its cover situations. You know why? Because Oliver decided to hunker down right next to a nest. Oh. I get it, you don't want a pin cushion next to the crib, not to mention the aesthetics. You got a southwest cactus thing going the side on eye from this the bird. front lawn, no wonder they're pissed. But it doesn't matter. That male bird can't do shit against Spiky Spiky. And you Aww. know mommy bird's giving him the what for. No sure, don't get worked up, honey, he says. I'll get rid of it. Bullshit. I swear, if I have to pee in the middle of the night and come back and sit on that thing by accident, he can't do anything right. Eggs. Now with a defense like that, you might expect that echidnas would be pretty good at digging, and you wouldn't be wrong. They've got some good equipment, too. Curved claws on their front feet and some excellent technique. More of an off-to-the-side scoop. You don't get dirt on your nethers like a dog do. In fact, their whole body plan is a bit splayed out to the sides, like an alligator, for example. And their pelvic girdle, which is what connects your top half to your bottom half, is more similar to a reptile than to other mammals. And this arrangement can make it look like the echidna's feet are put on backwards. Lots of weird stuff. They also have a low body temperature. And these sorts of oddities and reptilian similarities lead some people to call echidnas primitive. Echidnas are monotremes, a group of mammals that took a different turn from the rest of us about 160 million years ago. You know how like rock, hip hop, soul, and jazz are Yeah, they're so cute with their little schnozers. Well, monotremes are like the jazz of mammalian evolution. <laughs> 
Look at the echidna's closest living relative, beep, the beep, platypus. Beep. It's like Coltrane playing the song Rubber Ducky. But they've been evolving just as long as the rest of us, just doing it different. Sure, the backward feet can look a bit strange until you have to scratch your ass. That, They're oh. perfect for it. Now who's primitive? Echidnas can also use those snouts to dig, and that's because that thing is solid, made out of their face bones. Mm. I mean, from the top, the skull looks like a bicycle seat just right for a naked man. Now you're thinking about it, aren't you? <laughs> from the side, you can see it has a subtle curve to it. Well, they can use that Wait, thing what? it's a pointy plow, but not like some ordinary gardening tool. It's fancy. The thing's like a metal detector, but for ants and termites. They've got metal these receptors for on their ants. snouts that can sense small changes in electrical fields. And listen, if you're an ant or a termite and get found out, you're going to get the tongue. It's a long one, too. Chase you right down a hole. Mm. The French kiss in the kidney, you don't need a bidet. The tongue is covered in a sticky mucus that hauls insects to the back of the mouth. There they have two abrasive grinding Ew. surfaces, one at the base of the tongue and the other on the roof of the mouth. So when the echidna eats, it sounds like this. Anyway, back to Oliver. Now that he's grown, Hi, Oliver. Oliver will lead a fairly solitary life. But come on, what more do you want than some ants to eat, some birds to f*** with, and maybe a swim now and again? The exception is when Oliver gets horny. In breeding season, the females emit some stank that drives the males crazy. Mm. Male echidnas, as well as platypuses, have these little spurs on their back feet. The spurs are equipped with a venom gland. Platypuses use Wait, them. I have heard about this. Platypuses are actually giga venomous. Like, this shit will fuck up a human. It goes hard. ...to kick the crap out of each other during breeding season. Echidnas, not so much. Their spurs no longer stand up straight. And what used to be venom is now more of a benign, waxy, Aww. syphilitic drip. The scent of which apparently still has a role in mating. Why are you pre that? of stabbing each other, they have a civilized approach. They queue up. <laughs> males will follow a female around in these trains that can get up to ten males deep. It's like Conga the line. Canadian version of the human centipede. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. And this goes on for quite some time. It can be weeks before the female's ready to mate. And even then, she's only going to choose one or maybe a couple to mate with. A young echidna like Oliver doesn't stand a chance. Aww. And he knows it. Went home from the club early. L. He's going to have an Oliver night tonight. El Riz. Maybe break out the watercolor set. Or masturbate. Probably looks like the fountains at Bellagio. No. Oh my god. Okay, there's more penis in post credits, so let's not watch it. There's a best of internet daily dotes. There's the new unusual memes. This thing looks insane. I'm... Ah!